This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 365, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Welcome to another Friday edition of Optimal Health Daily. Fridays are usually where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. But today is gonna be different. I was again invited back as a guest on KGO Radio AM 810 with Brian Copeland for his Motivation Monday segment. And like before, I'm gonna share it with you. Now, before we get to it, a big thank you to Talkspace for sponsoring this episode. Talkspace is the online therapy company that lets you choose from over 1,500 licensed therapists. Get matched with your perfect therapist who can put you on the path to a happier life. For a special offer just for you, visit Talkspace.com slash OHD. Now, Brian Copeland and his producer Carolyn are such fans of this show, and so I wanted to thank them again for having me on as a guest. You can always find Brian Copeland directly by going to briancopeland.com or you can always listen live to his show at kgoradio.com slash briancopeland. Brian also has his own podcast. He also has archives of previous shows. So definitely check out his websites and show him your support as well. And so with that, here's the interview as we optimize your life. Well, if you are a regular listener to this program, you know that on Mondays at three o'clock, we do what I call Motivation Monday, where uh, I present an expert in the field of personal development to give you some uh, some practical tips for enhancing and improving the quality of your life. Now, we did not get a Motivation Monday this week because of Cal basketball, so we're going to do a special Thanksgiving edition Motivation Monday with one of my favorite guests. Uh, Dr. Neil Malik is a registered nutritionist and a dietitian. He's a professor at Best Year University, and he is also the host of Optimal Health Daily, which is a great daily podcast where he reads from blogs, uh, some of the best blogs uh, that are out there in the blogosphere that uh, deal with the issue of health. It is part of the Optimal Family of podcasts, and I listen to all of them. There's Optimal Living Daily, Optimal Finance Daily, Optimal Startup Daily, and Optimal Relationships Daily, because who's got time to read all these blogs? So you just go, you listen for a couple of minutes, and in five to seven minutes, you, you've got some wonderful information. So uh, so what we're going to talk about today is how to keep from overindulging during the holidays. Great topic to talk about on Thanksgiving. Dr. Neil, good to have you back, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure. All right. Um, now, we're, we're early in the day, although some people are probably having dinner already. I, th- I think most folks do a little bit later. What are some of the things we should be thinking about before we sit down at the table two hours from now? <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things that I encourage people to think about is how are you serving the food? On what kind of plates and bowls and cups? And utensils are you using? As you'll see, I'll I'll mention a little bit about that. But sometimes the way we set up the meal in advance Mm -hmm. influences how many calories we end up getting. You know, why do do we overindulge, especially at Thanksgiving? And I'll, I, you know, and I, I say we because I'm as guilty as anybody else. You, just, you know, at Thanksgiving, I will just eat a lot more food than I would normally eat, you know, sitting down for a, a regular dinner and eat when I'm not even hungry, you know, because there's so much stuff. You know, I get 30 people coming. Everybody, I cook a bunch of stuff, but everybody brings something. And it's like, you, know, you don't want to be rude. You don't want to, you know, you feel like you're missing out. But what, you know, why, why is it that, that we do this to ourselves? Yeah, it, it's really fascinating because kind of one, there's that expectation almost. It's, oh, we waited. It, it comes once a year. We waited so long. I've been so good. So now I'm going to let loose. And then the food is delicious. We don't consume these kinds of foods all that often. And so it's kind of considered a treat. And, and I'll be honest with you, I'm human. Uh, not so long ago in a land not so far away, I gained eight pounds myself between October 31st and January 1st. Wow. I'm in the field. Yeah. So <laughs> I get it. I get it. Well, what, what is the psychological thing behind it? Because I, I, I think the, the, the two uh, the times when I overindulge the most, and again, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's, it's Thanksgiving, of course. And if I go to a buffet... I mean, I try to avoid buffets like the plague because they, I mean, I'm talking about a buffet where I'm paying money, you know, rather than getting a sensible number of por- portions of, of, of something, I got to go back. I got to get a bunch and I got to go back. So what, what, what's the mindset? Why do we do that? Yeah, we want to get the most for our money, essentially. And we, 
as human beings are built to try and get as many calories as we can with as little effort as possible. We're, we're built to conserve calories. And so when we think about buffets or large meals like at Thanksgiving or during the holidays, it's very, it's a huge reward, a huge calorie reward for very little energy expenditure. And so it's kind of the perfect situation. It's what our, our bodies have been wanting for so long. Now, you said you gained eight pounds last year during the holidays. Do you know what the average weight gain is during the holidays? Um, just to be clear, it wasn't last year, but it was a time a while back. Oh, but, okay. Um, <laughs> a time a while back I've then. Been <laughs> yes, I've been, Two I years. Year, pardon me, year before last. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I have been better, but um, I actually am not aware of the data of, about how many pounds um, the average adult gains over these um, these couple of months. Yeah, I'm not positive about that. Yeah, they used to say six. I do remember remember that. I don't, I don't know if it's changed or not, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's more because of the fact that we have such an obesity issue uh, in, in this country. And so many of us are eating poorly and are eating are uh, are overweight. Um, so, so beyond Thanksgiving itself, um, some of the other pitfalls uh, d- during the holiday season, what Christmas parties, people bringing junk into work, that kind of stuff. Oh, absolutely. It's never the hit of the party. If you're the one bringing in the salad or the vegetable tray, we're looking for desserts and we're looking for the starchy vegetables like mashed potatoes and, of course, stuffing and those kinds of things. And, if, and, and let's not to mention liquid calories, drinks. Um, so these, these are the foods that we gravitate towards around this time of the year. And unfortunately they are often calorie dense and because they taste so darn good, it's sometimes hard to stop. Wow. You know, I, I just had a producer hand me a note according to the New York times, it's seven to 10 pounds. It's that much seven to 10 pounds that the average American gains during the holiday season. That's, that's, I mean, that's like 5% of your body weight for a lot of people. Uh, absolutely. And for me, I was right in the middle of that curve right there. And so, yeah, um, that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, do you think that uh, that there are, are some of us who are more at risk of overindulging than, than others? And, and if so, why and who, who would those people be? Yes, um, there are actually certain conditions that actually for most people um, will lead to more calories consumed. And one of the things I, I kind of touched on a moment ago was what are you serving your food off of? What size are your plates, cups, and bowls? Because that seems to make a difference. Um, whether you're distracted when you're eating. And when we think about it, we're with good company around the holidays, we're with family and we're talking and we're having a good time, but that actually leads to distracted eating, which mm-hmm. may make us consume more calories without even realizing it. Or if we're watching the TV, watching the game while we're eating. Yeah. That yeah. can also do it. You're not mindful. Um, you're not being mindful while while you're putting food in your mouth. Absolutely, yes. And we and we tend to, that kind of goes out the window um, around this time of year. Um, so those factors start to play a role, and that makes kind of everybody vulnerable. Not just certain folks, but we're all vulnerable to that. And then the food is just around constantly. And I don't, even if you have the most willpower in the world, at some point it'll break down when you keep seeing these foods out, and you'll just start pecking away at it. All right, you're going to give us five tips, five tips uh, to help us to keep from overindulging during the holiday season. With me on the KGO Live line, Dr. Neil Mollick. He's a registered nutritionist and dietitian, professor at Bastyr University, and also the host of the Optimal Health Daily podcast, which is part of the uh, Optimal family of podcasts. If you want to listen to any of these wonderful, wonderful uh, daily shows, go to Old Podcast. That's O-L-D is in Optimal Living Daily, Old Podcast. Dot com. Back with Dr. Neil's five tips right after this. A big thank you again to Talkspace for keeping the show going. Talkspace is the online therapy company that makes it easy to connect with an experienced, licensed therapist that you pick based on your preferences. And it's very affordable, a lot less than traditional therapy. You can send your therapist text, audio, and video messages, or even do a live video chat. Talkspace therapists are fully licensed and go through a rigorous screening process. Plus, they've done thousands of hours of supervised professional training. You can get matched with your perfect therapist at Talkspace.com slash OHD. And we have a special just for you. You can use the coupon code OHD to get $30 off your first month, all while showing your support for this podcast. 
That's the code OHD, and you can use that at Talkspace.com slash OHD. All right, we're talking about how to keep from overindulging during the holidays. You've got five tips. Let's start with number one. Number one is eat the protein and the vegetables first. When we, when we think about holiday meals, what's often surprising when we think about it is that it's actually quite balanced when it comes to the food groups, at least. It's just how we prepare them and the portions that kind of get us into trouble. So we're going to know. We know we have a, por- a protein component, the turkey usually, mm-hmm. or a ham, and then we have vegetables there. Usually it's, you know, what, green beans, maybe sweet potato. So my recommendation is start with those. So eat the protein-rich foods like the turkey first. Then eat the vegetables next. And what that's going to do is it's going to make you feel a little bit more full, a little bit more um, satiated. And that will prevent you from hopefully overindulging on the stuffing, the rolls, some of those carbohydrate-rich foods that often um, we tend to get into trouble with. Well, also, it's it, you know, what it is, it's, it's all the comfort food that we get in trouble with. I mean, how many times during the year do you eat macaroni and cheese, baked macaroni and cheese with nine kinds of cheese in it? <laughs> oh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, that's it. You know, and, and, and stuffing and all these, all these other things. Um, as far as the protein part is concerned, uh, let, let's talk about turkey for just a minute. Is there a difference in terms of, of whether you're going to feel more full eating uh, light meat turkey as opposed to dark meat turkey? Dark meat turkey having more, more fat in it. Um, I'm not aware of um, a difference in feelings of satiety between dark meat and light meat turkey, even though we would potentially presume that dark meat would make you feel more full because of the higher fat content. But I don't know of any data that has actually found that to be true. All right. Tip number two. Number two is watch out for those liquid calories. And uh, that includes gravy as well. So we know the holidays. We're going to have eggnog, alcohol, of course, Mm -hmm. and then gravies. So what we're what we know is alcohol is very calorie dense. Um, it what that means is by weight it contains quite a few calories, seven calories per gram. Now fat has nine calories per gram, so wow. they're pretty close. Yeah, they're pretty close. So now I'm not saying we need to completely avoid alcohol by any means or avoid gravy, but it's one of those things that if you're consuming alcohol, maybe nurse it just a little bit longer. Maybe carry it around with you and take sips as opposed to big gulps. And that'll make it last longer. It forces you to be a little bit more mindful. Mm-hmm. And that's just some calories saved. With <laughs> gravy, with gravy, a tip I use is instead of pouring it on my food, I use a spoon and usually a smaller spoon to, to actually scoop it on top of my food. And what happens is you end up using less that way than if you had poured it over your food. Oh, okay. It's like having, it's like having your, your, your salad dressing on the side kind of. You got it. Uh, let me ask you this in, in, about about liquid. Um, would it make a difference? Or, and I, I've heard this uh, is is a tip from some folks. If you want to uh, to eat less, is, is to drink a glass or two of water before you sit down to eat. W- would you suggest that? Do you think that that's something that works? Yes. So that can be a way to um, not make you feel as hungry and maybe as ravenous when you go up to the table. And so the water is going to provide volume for your stomach, which will give it sensation that it is full. And so you will typically eat less because of that. Okay, tip number three. Number three, use smaller plates, bowls, and utensils. So kind of like when I was saying scoop out the gravy with a spoon and then uh, drizzle it over your food. Um, What we're finding is when we consume food off of smaller plates, use smaller bowls, we actually consume fewer calories. Now, the question is always, aren't we going to feel hungry sooner? If we're eating off the smaller plates, we're going to consume less food, so we should be hungry. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually work that way. What's fascinating is this is research coming out of Cornell University that when we eat off the smaller plates, we actually feel the same level of satisfaction as if we had eaten the same meal but off of a larger plate with more food on it. So the brain can get tricked, which is pretty fascinating. Does it make a difference as to whether you're eating from a plain white plate as opposed to a plate with a pattern? I, I had read or heard something someplace that, uh, that, that folks who are eating off of white plates um, uh, are more mindful of what it is they're eating, whereas on a, on a, a plate with a pattern, the food's kind of camouflaged. I mean, have you read that or heard that, or is there any study to back that up you're aware of? Yeah, there is some preliminary data on that, but we do have more research on just t- on the size of the plates. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I know they're looking at patterns now and colors and those kinds of things because that does influence appetite. But I know that there's just 
more data with regards to size as opposed to color and patterns. Okay, tip number four. Wait before going in for seconds. So part of this idea of distracted eating that we talked about before, what happens when we're distracted, watching TV, visiting with friends and family, is we will not give our brains enough time to realize our stomach has had enough to eat. And so what will happen is we'll be chatting it up, enjoying the game, we'll look down at our plate, food's gone, and we don't, we don't even realize it. And so if we can take a moment, usually 15 to 20 minutes, if we can sit down at our meal, take our time consuming it, 15 to 20 minutes, it'll give our brains enough time to realize that we've had enough calories, we've had enough to eat. So I always recommend after you finish your plate, hang around, enjoy, relax, and then go back for seconds. Don't go back immediately. Give your brain some time to catch up. Okay, and uh, finally, tip number five. Stop eating when the hunger is gone. Okay, just so, stop right there. No. Yes. <laughs> no, it's Thanksgiving. No, that that's not the point. Hunger has nothing to do with this. This is about I want my macaroni and cheese. I'm not going to have for another yeah. year. I want another. I want all the pie. I want to taste all the pie. Let me stop when you're not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that is a very common, um, common thought process. For sure. <laughs> I will admit it. And, and what I would recommend then is um, don't forget, there's going to be probably lots of food left over and you'll have some time to enjoy those uh, tomorrow and the next day. And so um, it's really about the portion control. And that's where we kind of get into trouble over the holidays is, again, the food itself isn't so bad. Mm -hmm. It's how much we eat of it. And so um, something that's very popular in Japanese culture is you stop eating when you are 80% full. You don't get to that point of discomfort where the pants are feeling more snuggly and the belt's getting loosened and you're feeling sleepy. You get to the point where the hunger has gone away. You're feeling good. Yeah, there might be a little bit more room and you could take a few bites of dessert and everything, but just don't get to the point where you feel almost sick and uncomfortable like that. Then you consume far too many calories. Mm -hmm. But again, the next day, enjoy those foods. It's really just about portion control. Bottom line is we, we can still have it. We just don't have to eat it all at once. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Neil Malik, again, check out uh, his podcast, Optimal Health Daily, part of the Optimal family of podcasts, including Optimal Living Daily, Optimal Finance Daily, Optimal Startup Daily, and the newest one, uh, Optimal Relationships Daily. They're all wonderful. They read some of the best blogs and best information around. You get it in five to seven minutes a day. Dr. Neil Malik, it is always a pleasure. Please come back and see us again sometime soon. Happy to do so. Thanks so much, Brian. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, my friend. You too. Thank you. A big thanks again to Brian Copeland and his producer Carolyn for having me as a guest on their show. You can listen to Brian on KGO Radio and also listen in your podcast app. Just search for Brian Copeland and it'll pop up. Again, you can also find him online at briancopeland.com and you can listen live to his show at kgoradio.com slash briancopeland. And that is 365 episodes or a year's worth of episodes of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you, as always, for listening, for subscribing, for sharing this show with someone. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com that's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.